it was Rudolf Hess uh, who won the Nobel Prize. Uh, Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, 1949, for the mapping of parts of the brain involved in controlling internal organs. Okay, and he did that with his uh, implants, say, implanting cats. Okay, let's see here. In the 1930s, he shocked human patients with tiny needles that pierced the skull. Okay, so there you go. In the 1930s, he was also using these implantable uh, chips or implantable electrodes in human beings. So this was being done on humans at least in the 1930s. That's at the latest. Uh, and here we go. 18 In the year 1870, two Germans, Eduard Hitzig and Gustav Fritsch, electrically stimulated the brains of dogs. Uh, it demonstrated certain portions of brain control and motor functions. So that was 18, 1870 they were implanting electrodes in animals' heads. Uh, let's see here. In the 1940s and 50s, Walter Penfield experimented in electrical brain stimulation on surgery patients. Okay, so 30s, 40s, 50s, you have different people implanting electrodes in human brains. Uh, let's see here. 1949, Tulane University Department of Psychiatry and Neurology implanted electrodes into patients' brains. Robert G. Heath did this work with CIA and military funding. He also injected drugs into brain tissue. He used LSD, psilocybin, and mescaline. 1949, Tulane University and the CIA and military working on implants. So there you go. You have the military working on this before 1950. Uh, let's see here. Here's more of uh, more notes on Delgado's work at Yale. Here's a good quote, but I'm not sure who it's from. Um, Medical University of Madrid. But anyway, here's the quote. The most interesting aspect of the transdermal stimulus is the ability to perform simultaneous recording and stimulation of brain functions thereby permitting the establishment of feedbacks and on-demand programs of excitation with the aid of the computer. With the increasing sophistication and miniaturization of electronics, it may be possible to compress the necessary circuitry for a small computer into a chip that is implantable sub subcutane subcutaneously. Sorry about that. <laughs> In this way, a new self-contained instrument could be devised capable of receiving and analyzing and sending back information to the brain, establishing artificial links between unrelated cerebral areas, functional feedbacks, and programs of stimulation contingent on the appearance of predetermined patterns. Okay, well, that's just uh, using a computer to actually control the... Um, electronic implant and get to do specific functions for you. So they're talking about that. And it looks like that was from 1975. They're talking about using computers to control these chips in the minds of animals or humans. You know, they didn't work on both. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.